So in this section basically we will be dealing with the, what are the different types of test that we are using for determining water quality and some of the techniques for filtering the water. Okay. So this is what is present in this topic. We will start from the beginning. Okay. So regarding the determination of sanitary quality of drinking water, we have to make sure that water that we are drinking is of good quality. Because we have been seeing, studying about the importance of water quality and what are the different types of diseases which are, which are caused by poor water quality so far. So here you can see that the first sentence itself is saying that access to good quality drinking water is becoming part of a universal human right. The success of any government is normally measured by whether the government is able to feed its people, whether the government is able to give good, power, good water to its people. So if the government can do these two basic things, you can say that government is doing good job. On the other hand, if the government of a country is unable to feed its people and not able to provide good quality water, we cannot say that that government is doing an efficient job. So that is a because so that is uh, getting a good quality water is a human basic human right. However, access to good quality drinking water in its right quantity and right time, as well as the right place, is still a dream to be achieved. In many urban and rural areas of our country. Luckily, we are living in a state where there is plenty of water. We have a lot of, many rivers are there, around 44 rivers are there in Kerala. So, I think almost all parts of Kerala are, uh, are blessed with a lot of water, abundant water. So, that is the case in Kerala, but not in other states of India. India is basically a dry or a semi-dry country because if you go to the middle of India or the western part of India like Gujarat, Rajasthan, etc. They are basically dry area. Even the Punjab is also a dry area except if the, these five rivets of Punjab are not supplying water, Punjab is in a dry bed. Delhi is in a dry bed. So most parts of India are in a dry area, are in a dry bed. So unless there is, we call it, there is a regular supply of water, people will be suffering. So people living in cities and municipalities do get portable water supplied by municipal authority. But this situation is not so um, severe in a city area or an urban area because of an urban area there will be a lot of government officials are there and because they are also living there, they make sure that water supply to city are always in a in a uh, regular way. But that is not the case in the rural areas of India. Many rural areas of India do not uh, lack even the supply of water um, no, to, uh, even one or two, uh, two days in a week. So that is a very, very uh, pathetic situation in many parts of India. In, in large rural areas, people face burden of collecting water from various sources like rivers, ponds, lakes, springs. So I have shown you in the last class with the women or other people are standing before uh, before a tap with the bucket, with the bucket or the cells. If that is the situation in Kerala also, that used to be the situation some 10, 30 or 40 years back. But now the Kerala has no water shortage. Government have made sure that all the people are getting more quality water. But still in many parts of India that is the situation. If that situation comes, People have to spend a lot of time collecting water, that means less time in productive work. So that is the problem if water supply is not ensured to the people regularly. So quality of these water sources is often threatened by agricultural runoff. Because if people are collecting water from pond or from the streams or rivers and there are paddy fields or wheat fields are there, the fertilizers and pesticides that which are which we use on the agricultural field we will naturally come to this river water because of agri water agriculture runoff. So that is one problem that is usually affecting uh, rural area people in the rural area. They are they may be consuming water 
which may be containing pesticides or other kind of fertilizers and that is not good for the health. Then these are some of the area where people are collecting water, some may be collecting water from rain water, tap water, then people are getting from stream water, then well water is used, river waters are used in the lake water. These are the different sources of water availability in India. And bore well is a very important source of water supply. Because kind of bore well, you know how bore well are uh, water taken. So if, if there is any contamination of groundwater, this uh, this contamination or this pollutants will also enter, enter the groundwater. And consuming such bore, water coming from the bore well can cause a lot of problems because of chemical contamination. So this is the, so it, we have to make sure that the water that we are get, collecting from bore well should, should be free from harmful chemicals. That was the case that happened in the case of endosulfide. Without bothering about the uh, harmful pesticide or use in the agricultural field, people consume that uh, groundwater. And that resulted in a lot of health damage, health effects. Then municipal sup supply or municipal means supply could be contaminated through corroded pipelines. You know that if Kerala Water Authority is mainly supplying water in most of the houses in Kerala. So sometimes the pipes that 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 supplying water to our house may be laid some 50 or 40 years back. If that may not be in a good situation, that may be corroded, uh, rusty. So that will be allowing entry of microorganisms into the water. So that is another possibility of water getting contaminated. So we have to make sure that the, the water that we are drinking is always free of harmful chemicals as well as harmful bacteria. Now what are the different procedures that we can employ to make sure that the water that we are drinking is of good quality? There are basically three different types of tests. One is physical tests, chemical tests and bacteriological tests. Now physical test is basically is something that we can check for example color of the water. If the water, color of the water is yellow, we can immediately say that that water is not good quality. And if there is smell coming out, we still say that that water is not safe. So that is the normal method, is something that we can test by our own sense organ. Chemical test on the other hand is usually uh, done by uh, so the, the special test. Because chemical tests will be mainly checking for the presence of organic chemicals or inorganic chemicals. And we have to use some tests for that. And in the case of bacteriological tests, tests or biological tests, what we are checking is that we may we check for the presence of pathogens, especially disease causing bacteria. Now for basically we are checking for E. coli. If E. coli is present, we assume that other types of bacteria can also be present. So bacteriological tests will be showing the presence of bacteria. So these are the three different types of tests which we are commonly used for uh, testing for water quality. Now here you can see that what are the different types of tests that are possible under each category. Coming to the physical test, it is a probability. For example, when rain water, when rain, uh, during rainy season, you can see that our river will be flowing with enlarged water or sometimes reddish water. Why this yellow color or red color comes to the water? Because of a lot of dissolved or suspended soil particle. So this suspended particle in the water will give will be blocking the penetration of light and light may not be able to pass through it. When light is unable to pass through it, photosynthetic activity by algal organism may not be taking place. So that is a problem of increased turbidity. Then palatability referring to the taste of the water. So by drinking water, if we feel that it has a bad taste, then we can assume that it may be containing some organic or inorganic chemicals in that. Then conductivity of the water is referring to electrical conductivity. We will be using two electrodes and we will be passing electricity through that. And if there is high conductivity, that means and the water may be containing more organic or inorganic chemicals in that. So a good quality water usually having a lower conductivity. So total dissolved solute, that is how much amount of solid particles are present in the water. 
that is the meaning of the total dissolved solute. Then organolytic properties. Organolytic properties primarily referring to the presence of organic compounds in that. So these are some of the uh, physical tests that we are checking for. Then coming to the chemical test, we are checking for the acidic or alkaline nature or we are checking for the pH of the water. Then how much amount of dissolved oxygen? Normally the water will be containing around 6, the 6 units of dissolved oxygen. That is a normal value, 6 to 7. But if the dissolved oxygen level is uh, below 4 or 3, then we can see that, that the water is not containing sufficient quantity of oxygen, sufficient amount of oxygen. Then residual free chlorine. So you know that Kerala Water Authority and all water water authorities in different parts of India and abroad are using chlorine as the main and main uh, you know you know cleaning agent. When chlorine is used, a little amount of chlorine will be remaining in the water. If you drink a chlorinated water and a normal pond water, you can immediately sense that there is slight difference in the taste of the water. That difference is because of the presence of methyl chlorine or chlorinated compounds in the in the in the treated water. So that is known by the residual chlorine. Residual chlorine is chlorine that is residual or that is remaining in the uh, supplied water. And one advantage of residual chlorine is that that will be preventing the growth of any any bacteria that may be entering into the water in future. Then radionucleotide. For example, if you go to this uh, Chavara area in Kolla, the water may be containing lot of illuminate. Illuminate is a mineral from which we are uh, taking the getting the titanium. So illuminate is a radioactive uh, mineral. So if you are consuming water with the more illuminate in that, that is not good for our health because that illuminate will be causing radiation and that radiation can result in damage to our DNA. Maybe children may be born with a lot of health defects. So these are the problem with the drinking water containing radioactive nucleotides. Then similarly organic and inorganic chemicals can be present in water. So these are the chemical tests that we that are normally conducted by the technicians. Then third category is the microbial. Bi microbial is basically concerned with biological properties of water. What we are checking is that how much whether the fecal coliform, what is the normally fecal coliform, in the last class we have studied about structure of the fecalis, then uh, yes, E. e coli, these are the common type of fecal bacteria, whether those bacteria are present in higher amount. It's low, a lower amount is not a problem, but if this higher, if these bacteria, fecal bacteria are present in a higher amount, that means that the water is harmful for drinking. Similarly, amount of other coliform bacteria. That also indicates that the bacterial entry might have taken place in the water. So that is also a, a possible warning sign that the water may be harmful. Then uh, fecal streptococci, these are all over the two the cat. Then presence of cyst or ova of parasite. Parasite means a, a tapeworm, brown worm, or, or, or other kinds of um, worm or gap worms. They will be producing small eggs and then if their eggs are present in water, bringing that water can cause health growth infection or ongoing infection or other kinds of wound infection. So these are the, uh, the tests that we are normally conducting in to, to make sure that water is suitable for drinking. So under the water quality parameters, we will be checking the physical quality, chemical quality as well as the microbial quality of the water. So already I have explained this physical test basically referring to the color of the water, turbidity of the water, total solid, dissolved solid, etc. Color may be, for example, when iron is present, the water will be red in color. Then, uh, I, uh, then, uh, then uh, sometimes, then sometimes if vegetables such as algae or weeds are present, then water may be brownish in color. Then. So this is one uh, one day by which we are testing for the quality of water. Turbidity is because of the presence of suspended particles or colloidal matter. Now the the, the problem with the tar turbidity is that if water is of higher turbidity, 
treating that water or filtering that water will be more time consuming and more expensive. So that is a problem if the, if the river water is turbid. So that is the one uh, that, the, that is the importance of turbidity of water. Then odor and taste. Odor, bad smell means uh, some amount of decaying particles are there. That is the mean. Then decaying organic matter is present like weeds, algae. Or there can be waste coming from industrial water like ammonia, phenol, halogens, hydrocarbon. All these are organic compounds. They can decay, they can cause decay, decaying smell and because of the interaction of these chemicals and producing many harmful you know, organic chemicals. So that will be giving the water a bad taste as well as a bad color and a bad smell. If you go to a sewage water, now immediately you know that it has a bad smell or a dirty brown color. That is because of the interactions of these uh, organic and inorganic particles. The taste is important to fish, rendering them unpalatable. So uh, this, for example, if fish is living in that water, and what the fish that is consuming this water will also have that bad taste. That makes them unpalatable. Unpalatable means not tasty, not uh, uh, of good taste. That is the main word, uh, unpalatable. While chlorination dilutes odor and taste caused by some contaminants, it generates a foul odor itself and added to polluted, I mean added to water, polluted with the detergents, algae or some other. The problem is that you may be, we can use chlorination. Chlorination is a technique for killing bacteria. But if you are taking a polluted water, a water containing a lot of algae and other waste and other organic waste and we are using chlorinated chlorination, the problem is that chlorine will be reacting with these organic compounds and producing many other compounds which, have, which may be of bad, uh, unsuitable color or taste. So that is the problem of uh, chlorinating water containing polluted, pollu presence of pollu uh, pollutants. So before chlorination, normally the technicians make sure that water is filtered properly. They are completely free of any kind of harmful, harmful, harmful organic material. How does some say Okay, then the next one is coming to the chemical test. Chemical test basically we are taking for the presence of pH and hardness. pH I think I have already explained. pH is a measure of acidity or alkalinity to water. The values of 9.5 and, uh, 9 and above indicate high alkalinity. And similarly values below 3 indicate low high acidity. So normally the pH value is now of a neutral water is 7. So if the pH of the water is between 6.5 and 7.5, that water is okay for drinking, safe for drinking. But any, any variation in, uh, from this 6.5 or 7.5 to either end will, will, make it, will make that water more acidic or more alkaline and not suitable for drinking. Low pH value help in effective chlorination, but cause problems and corrosion. If the pH of the water is high, and the problem is that the pipes that we are using for supplying water will be corroded or get, uh, get rusted. So that is a problem of high acidity. Then drinking water should have a pH between 6.5 and 8.5. So anyways, uh, uh, the better value is 6.5 and 7.5, that will be the lower than 8. Harbor basin water can be between 6 and 9. Then similarly, there is another test called BOD. BOD simply means biological oxygen demand. It denotes the amount of oxygen needed by microorganism for stabilization of decomposable organic matter under aerobic condition, a confusing standard. That is, uh, when um, organic particles are present in water, for example, any, any living organism like an animal or plant, when they are dying, they will be decaying. And that decay process will be taking a lot of oxygen from the water. How much oxygen these decaying organisms are taking is, a, is, a, is a usually expressed in the same of biochemical, biological oxygen demand. So when a decaying organism or decaying plants, particles are taking a lot of oxygen, we say that it has a high bio BOD. So high BOD is, uh, is uh, directly related to 
higher amount of organic particles which are decaying. So decaying particles in the water means more higher, more DOD. So, so normally a good quality water, a portable water should have a very low BOD. So higher BOD means the water is not suitable for drinking. High BOD means there is less oxygen to support life and indicates organic pollution. So that is a problem of BOD and that is what is the meaning of by that we are getting by checking the BOD. Similarly, bacteriological tests we have already seen. seen there are different types of bacteriological tests than some of the bacteriological tests we will be seeing. Basically, all these bacteriological tests are checking for the presence of any fecal bacteria or other sort of bacteria. Uh, so that if fecal bacteria or other bacteria are present in the water, that is that water is not portable and, and has to be filtered and chlorinated to make sure that the water becomes more portable again. Now, bacteriological analysis of water, how we can analyze the water for bacteria, presence of bacteria. A method of analyzing water to estimate the number and type of bacteria. That is the meaning of the bacteriological analysis of water. So, when we say that we have, we are analyzing the bacteriological quality of water, what we are doing is that we are checking what type of bacteria is present in this water. How much amount of that bacteria is present in that water? That is the meaning of the word bacteriological analysis of water. So it is a microbiological analytical procedure which use samples of water uh, to and determine the concentration of water. This process is used to routinely to confirm that water is safe for human consumption or bathing or recreational purpose. So we will see how this bacteriological technique is normally done. The first step, there are a number of tests and one important test is the membrane filter technique. So in this membrane filter technique, membrane filter technique uses a filtration apparatus and a cellulose filter called membrane filter. Here I will show you the picture. So this is a membrane filter method. See, here we are taking water in a glass uh, jar, glass apparatus. Uh, glass, uh, glass, uh, and we are pouring a sample of water into it. And here you can we have kept a membrane filter. And water that which we have poured here will be slowly dripping down or settling down and finally reaching the lower flask. So water has to pass through this membrane filter. So that is the process. When water is passing through this membrane filter, if bacteria or other type of microorganisms are present, that will be trapped in this membrane filter because that membrane filter will not allow the entry or passage of bacteria but the water can easily pass through that. So such a technique is known by the membrane filter technique and this is one of the most common type of technique that we are using. So uh, after that what we are doing is that here we can see this is a, uh, we are, uh, this is a sample water and sample water is allowed to pass through this membrane filter and, uh, and the remaining water will be collected at the lower flask. Then what we do is that in this membrane filter, if any bacteria is present, we keep this membrane filter in a, no, no, in a bacteria uh, supporting media, um, uh, with a media that allows the growth of bacteria. Then after two weeks or one month, we will check for the presence of this. If many, if one bacteria is present, each bacteria will be forming a colony. So if identifying a single bacteria with human eye may not be possible. But if 10,000 or 1 lakh bacteria is growing together, we can easily identify it with our naked eye. So that is this, so that means each of these white spot indicates one bacterial colony. One bacterial colony means 1 lakh or more than 1 lakh bacteria in that. So that will be easier, that will be easier for us to identify. So that is the meaning, that is the technique by which we are using membrane filter technique. See how the process is done, you can see that. Now we are taking in a 100 ml of water and we are allowing the water to pass through filter and be the bacteria trapped in the filter and grow on the medium from the colonies. By counting the colonies, an estimate can be made of the number of bacteria in the original 100 ml sample. So what we are taking is that we are taking 100 ml of water, we are allowing this 100 ml of water to pass through this bacterial filter. 
then uh, and after some time then uh, we will allow the bacterial filter you can see that uh, this bacterial filter is of a uh, millipore filter that means very very fine uh, holes are the uh, yeah, the size of the holes will be 0.45 micrometer or, or micro micrometer or micron so the pores in the membrane filter are sufficiently small enough to trap the different type of microorganism so that is the advantage of membrane filter bacteria here also you can see that the bacteria will be trapped here but water will be passing through that so that is how the membrane filter technique is used and it is one of the most common type of uh, technique that we are using for the filtration of the water it is a very effective method of isolation as well as counting enumeration means counting counting of bacteria in the water, test water sample so by knowing the quantity of microbial mass, the quality of water is the measurement. That is, if we see that lot of bacterial colonies are there, that is a sign that that water is polluted and that water is containing microorganisms. If few bacterial colonies are there, we can assume that the water is not not very not very you know won't cause any problem and we can safely drink that. So higher the bacterial colony, higher the risk of drinking water. So membrane filtration technique is the best technique for water analysis as it allows the testing of large volume of water in it. This is one important advantage because we can easily measure large volume or lot of water in a, in, in a small amount of time. So that is the biggest advantage of using membrane filter technique. That is, it's a day, that is it allows the testing of large volume of water in less time. That is the biggest advantage of that. Then it is also easy to count the colony by simply counting the bacterial uh, colony number. Okay, so that is the membrane filter technique. And uh, then we have one more technique that is uh, used for this. And that is a standard plate count method. So in this, uh, basically this standard plate count method is somewhat similar to this. In this test, samples of water are diluted in jars containing 99 ml sterile water and samples are placed in petri dish with a nutrient agar or uh, nutritious medium. See, uh, this is how the, the entire procedure is done. So this is the original water. We take 10, 10 ml of uh, sample water from a pond or from a river. And from that 10 ml, we pour 1 ml into this uh, distilled water. This is sterile water. So here 9 ml is uh, clean water or sterile water and 1 ml is a sample water. Okay, so the dilution is 0.1%. So this is the uh, 1 is to 1000, that is a dilution of 0.1%. Then next the second step, we take 1 ml. 1 ml of this mixed water and pour it into this 9 ml of sterile water again. So the dilution becomes 0.001. Points, uh, point zero 0.01 that is 100 times dilution then again we take 1 ml from that and pour it into the other uh, test tube then the dilution becomes 1000 times then we do it in the fourth test tube the dilution becomes 10,000 times while doing it in the fifth test tube it becomes 1 lakh times so here you can see that and from each 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 test tube, we will be collecting small amount of water and allowing that water to form colonies on a uh, petri dish. And here you can see that what is the advantage that we are basically doing the same tests like this. So here is that 10 ml of water, 9 ml of water. So we are diluting it in the one to 100 times, 1000 times, 10,000 times, 1 lakh times. And in each from each, we will be taking a small amount of water. And we will be uh, placing that in a uh, agar medium. This is the agar medium and allowing the bacteria to grow. For example, this is the original water, 10 times diluted water. We can see that 1, 2, 3, 4 colonies are there. And this is the second one, 100 times diluted water. Here also we can find, and five. here 5 colonies, here also 5 colonies. Here also with 1000 times diluted water, here we can see 5 colonies. Here are 10,000 times diluted water, here we can see uh, 5 colonies. The advantage of this technique is that it is improving the accuracy of test. So that is the biggest advantage of this uh, standard plate count technique. Basically it is a technique 
the of the same membrane degree. But we are diluting water in a series of uh, in a sequential way, ten times, hundred times, thousand times, ten thousand times, and we are taking water from each of that and water from each each sample and allowing that sample to grow on a bacterial medium. And this is how the uh, what the standard plate counter technique is normally done. And the purpose of standard plate count technique is that it should improve the accuracy of water testing. Basically, it is similar to the, the first membrane filtration technique. Now, another technique that we are using for the uh, is the most probable method. And in this most probable method, this is also similar to standard plate count, count technique. And what we are doing is that uh, the tubes of lactose brut are inoculated water sample containing 10 ml, 1 ml and 0.1 ml. This is what is indicated. This is the original water sample. And we are pouring little water into the each sample. This is a 10 ml of sample. Then this is a 1 ml of sample and this is 0 0.1, uh, 0.1 ml of sample. And by this mechanism also we can test whether the water uh, is uh, uh, contaminated by the presence of bacteria. So this is also a, uh, an equally important type of technique. But the advantage of this technique is that these techniques are actually increasing the accuracy of water testing. So that is the importance of most probable te technique also. Basically it is, but here, here, here we are checking for the presence of any gas formation. That is, what, that is how we are making sure that bacteria has grown in that water sample. So these are the different techniques that we are using for testing the water sample. Sometimes one of the any of these tests can be uh, uh, can be as in your examination, give an account of the different and bacteria tests for bacteriological analysis of water. So that is the end of this topic.